Next, we start with a discussion of understanding the concept of basis or basis risk as we call it. So basis is defined as the difference between the spot price of the asset being hedged minus the futures price of the futures contract. So this difference is what we term as basis. So basis will converge to zero over a period of time as the spot price converges to futures price. However, during the life of a futures contract, this basis will keep on fluctuating because we know that futures contract have a certain time to expiry or a certain delivery date. So as we know, every futures contract will have a specific delivery month. So until that delivery time, there will be fluctuations in basis. So uh, you can either have a basis strengthening or basis weakening, which you observe over the life of futures. So this is what we call as increasing and decreasing of basis. So whenever the basis increases, that is the difference between the spot price and the futures price rises, we call it as the strengthening of basis. And whenever the difference between spot price and the futures price decreases, we call it as the weakening of basis. And this is a phenomenon which will continue throughout the life of the futures position right until the delivery date. Now, let's try to understand the strengthening and weakening uh, concepts through a simple example. Now, uh, let's take uh, uh, let's take a few few price levels and try to understand this behavior. So let's say the spot price today is five dollars and a futures price today is four point eight. Imagine we are talking of a certain underlying asset. So so we need not worry about what that asset is at this point in time. We are we want to understand the concept of basis. So these price levels are good enough, and we'll take a time of one month. So we'll assume that we are going forward in uh, time by one month. Now, as a first step from from the given price data, from the given price data, we have that the basis is nothing but the difference between the two. That is five and four point eight. Because if I take a step back and go to the definition of basis, it's the difference between spot price of the hedged asset and the futures price of the futures contract. So from the given data, I just plug in the numbers five and four point eight. So the difference in the in these will give me 0.2 dollars, which is what I call as the basis. Now let's take three scenarios to understand how exactly the basis is going to behave. Uh, that is whether the basis is remaining unchanged or uh, do we witness a strengthening or weakening of basis. So let's try to understand the three scenarios. So starting with scenario one, which is basis unchanged. Now let's say in one month the spot price moves to 5.2 and the futures price moves to 5. Now in this case the basis is remaining unchanged at 0.2 because we are taking a difference of 5.2 and 5 which is 0.2. And this 0.2 dollars is something which we'll be comparing against our original calculation of 0.2 dollars, which we had calculated uh, as a, as step one. So by comparing these two numbers, we see they are equal. So in scenario one, we see basis is unchanged because the basis earlier also was 0.2, and after one month as well, the basis has remained as 0.2. Next is let's try to understand basis strengthening. So let's say in one month's time, the spot price has moved to five and a half and the futures price has moved to 5. Now, if we take a simple difference, 5.5 minus 5, that gives us 0.5 dollars. Now, this is what we call a strengthening of basis because, again, I will be comparing 0.5 dollars against my earlier value of 0.2 dollars. So, earlier my basis was 0.2, which has risen to 0.5. So, that's why we say this is a scenario of basis strengthening. Next is, let's understand basis weakening. So let's say in one month's time, the spot price has moved to 5.1 and the futures price has moved to 5. Now here, again, taking a simple difference between the price levels 5.1 and 5, uh, we get a value of 0.1$. Now, 0.1$ is the basis in uh, this scenario. Now, comparing 0.1$ versus the original basis, which was 0.2, we see there is a decrease in this value. Now, because of this decrease from 0.2 to 0.1, we see we say that there is a weakening of basis. So this is how we can relate uh, the basis calculation with the three scenarios: basis remaining unchanged, basis strengthening, or basis weakening. Now let's understand uh, the change in basis and how exactly it's going to impact a certain position. Let's understand it through a simple example. Now imagine a firm in June 2021 wants to purchase 25,000 pounds of aluminium in December 2021. So this you can say is their target month. And a company 
is going to use a long hedge because we know that whenever we have to procure something, we go in for a long hedge position. The June spot and December futures prices at that time are 2.5 and 2.7 respectively. Now we'll take two scenarios. So the first scenario is where the basis is going to converge to zero and we'll take the other scenario whereby we observe a strengthening and weakening of basis. So let's understand this through a simple working workings which are given here. So plotting the spot and futures prices as given. So we are given 2.5 and 2.7 which goes into which are which is precisely these two numbers 2.5 and 2.7 under June 2021. So the basis standing today again taking a simple difference 2.5 minus 2.7 gives us minus 0.2. Now let's take the December 2021 scenario. We can split it into two parts. One is where the futures is going to converge to spot price. That is, we say we say there is a convergence of basis. Our basis reduces to zero. So we have taken three different price levels. So we have taken uh, spot going to 2.5 and futures uh, ending up there uh, at the same price. Then we have taken a price of 2.7 and 2.85. Just three scenarios to demonstrate. Uh, where the spot and futures may end up in December. And here if we again take a simple difference, we observe that the difference is zero. That is, we observe there is a convergence in basis. Now let's say, owing to some reason, there is an unexpected movement in basis which has happened, which, which, I, which can either lead to strengthening of basis or weakening of basis. So again, we have taken two price levels here. So let's say the spot ends up at 2.7 and futures ends up at 2.64. So there is a difference of 0.06. This is what we call as basis strengthening. Second scenario is basis weakening. So let's say the spot ends up at 2.7, but futures ends up at 2.76. So here again, a simple difference between these two levels gives us minus 0.06. And this is what we call as weakening of basis. Now we, uh, we have an unhedged cost. That is, uh, whenever there is no derivative involved, then the cost involved will be a simple uh, multiplication between the spot price at the respective uh, at the respective level. So we have taken these scenarios. So we have to simply look at these respective spot prices, and we have to multiply it by our quantity in question, which is twenty five thousand pounds. So to get to minus six three seven five zero, we simply take a product of two point five five, which is the spot price in December 2021, multiplied by 25,000 pounds, which gives me minus 63750. Likewise, for getting 67500, we do 2.7 into 25,000 and similarly for the third scenario as well. Same thing gets repeated for the unexpected movement in basis as well. So we take the spot price of 2.7 and we multiply it by 25,000 pounds, which is the quantity in question, and we come up with minus 67500. So this is what we call as the unhedged cost or whenever the derivative is not present. Now, uh, now we study the long hedge position and finally we are going to combine the two. So when I say combine the two, I will be combining the underlying along with the derivative in order to arrive at a net cost. So that, that so that's where we are going to. So looking at the at scenario one, whereby we see a convergence of basis. Then let's calculate the futures gain or loss per pound. So we simply take a difference. So we know that the futures price at the, at the start in June 2021 was 2.7. And the futures price for December 2021 in this very first scenario, whereby we see a level of 2.55. So we take a difference. So 2.55 minus 2.7, which gives us minus 0 0.15. So this is per pound. Now, our quantity in question is 25,000 pounds. So this difference of minus 0 0.15 is multiplied by 25,000, which gives us a value of minus 3750 US dollars. Now, if we add the two, that is the unhedged cost of minus 63750 plus 37,500. So if I add A and B, I come to minus 67,500, which becomes a net cost. A similar approach will be applied for the other two levels, 2.7 and 2.85. So let's go through the 2.7 scenario. 
So again, we co compare 2.7 versus the earlier futures price, which was 2.7. Now again, by simply taking a difference, we observe that the value is zero because the levels are the same. So the futures gain or loss per pound is zero. So naturally, the futures gain or loss on the position also will be zero because it's a simple multiplication, zero into 25,000, which gives us a zero here as well. So adding zero plus 67,500 gives us this end result. And similarly, we do it for the third scenario as well, whereby we get 67,500. So we observe that whenever there's a scenario whereby we, there is a convergence in basis, we end up with the exact same amount. So we ended up with minus 67,500 in all of these three scenarios. However, this will not be the same if we observe an unexpected movement in basis. So if we observe a strengthening or weakening of basis, that scenario will be different. So let's understand those. So focusing on the basis strengthening portion. So first calculate the futures gain or loss per pound. So in order to get this 0 0.06, I simply take the futures price in December, which is 2.64 minus 2.7, which gives us minus 0 0.06. To calculate the entire position wide number, we take 0 0.06 multiplied by 25,000 pounds, which is the quantity in question, which gives us minus 1500. So adding 67,500 along with minus 1500 gives us minus 69,000. Now let's take the basis weakening scenario. So here we com compare 2.76 versus 2.7. So by taking the difference, we get 0 0.06. So this is the futures gain per pound. Now 0 0.06 into the quantity in question, which is 25,000 pounds, gives us 1,500 positive. So if we add the two, minus 67,500 plus 1,500, we end up with minus 66,000. So here we see there is a difference. We don't have a exact same amount because earlier we had 67,500 in all the three scenarios in case of convergence. But whenever there is no convergence or whenever there is unexpected movement in basis, we see a difference. So we have two levels. We have minus 69,000 and minus 66 cost. That is the, the net cost. In the tendering part, uh, we observe that the spot price has risen beyond the futures price. So that is something which is detrimental to the long position. So that's why they end up paying more. So they end up paying minus 69,000. Whereas in case of basis weakening, now we see that the spot price is below the futures price. So naturally, it will benefit the long position. So that's why their procurement cost comes to minus 66,000. So in the basis weakening, the long hedge is in a better position. So this is what happens whenever there is any kind of unexpected movement in basis which happens. For And whereas if we contrast this with scenarios where the basis is converging, then it's not a problem. Uh, once the convergence is there, we end up with the exact same net cost as we have observed here. So this example helps us understand how exactly basis is going to have an impact whenever one is taking a certain futures position in order to hedge uh, a certain portfolio uh, position. So now that we know the concept of basis and the basis risk which a market participant can get exposed to, let's understand various sources for the basis risk. So first, it can be the choice of the asset which is underlying the futures contract. So if there is a mismatch between the asset which is underlying the futures contract against uh, the position which we are trying to hedge, then that can give rise to basis risk. And whenever this is the case, then uh, the hedge has to be put in place very, very carefully. So there is a concept called as cross hedging, which will be which we'll be discussing in a subsequent part of this video. So whenever there is a mismatch, uh, we can go in for a certain uh, additional step in calculation, which we call as cross hedging, which helps us relate uh, our underlying exposure versus and uh, for managing that underlying exposure, we are using some other futures contract, but we have to decide on uh, what would be the exact number of futures uh, contracts to be used. So that we'll understand through a simple example as well in a subsequent portion where we call as cross hedging. So the point here is whenever there is such a difference which is observed, which is a uh, very, very common because it's very, it may not be possible that at every situation we will have a exactly matching futures contract, which is there to hedge our position. So whenever a matching futures contract is not available to hedge our underlying, we would have to go in for a cross hedging. So uh, this can be one of the sources of basis risk. 
Next is choice of delivery month. So we know that every futures contract has a certain specific delivery month, which is defined as a part of that contract. So we could have maybe December 2021, June 2021, etc. So basis risk increases as the difference between the hedge expiration and the delivery month increases. So that way, uh, we should try and keep these very, very close to each other. That is, imagine that I have a certain position which I want to hedge. And if I'm using uh, a futures in order to uh, hedge that position, then the, the dates should not be too divergent. That is the time until which my delivery month is there and the time until which I want the uh, hedge to be taken. Those two dates should be very, very close to each other so that I do not keep my position uh, unhedged for a longer period of time. So uh, based on that, it is advisable to choose a delivery month which is very close to but later than the expiration date of the hedge. So commonly, this is something which market participants do. Now, uh, a few reasons as to why the choice of delivery month is so important. So firstly, if the expiration date matches the delivery month, then the contract of that particular delivery month has to be chosen. So this, I would say, is an ideal scenario. So if we have a requirement and we have a futures contract which is exactly matching with our required month, then we can definitely go in for that uh, that type for that futures contract. So, so that's an easy choice. But that may not be possible all the time. So there can be a date mismatch. So from our delivery date versus the delivery month, which is there on the future, there can be a difference. So whether that is the case as something which you have seen, which you have mentioned in point B here. So generally the contracts with later delivery months will be preferable in this case. The reason be why we should go in for a contract of futures, which is low, which is later than our expected delivery date, because it is generally observed that in the delivery month, the futures prices show erratic moments and we as hedges or market participants would not want to expose ourselves to those kind of fluctuations which are seen during the delivery month for the futures. So that, that is one of the reasons as to why we would want to go in for a futures contract which, is a, which has a delivery month which is later than our expected delivery date. And uh, another way to look at things is scenario C. So this has to do with liquidity of futures. So not every futures contract which transact on the exchange is liquid. And generally it's observed that short maturity futures are far more liquid as compared to longer maturity futures. And we know the benefits of liquid contracts. We should always go in for liquid positions because whenever we have those contracts which carry higher liquidity, the price efficiency is far better. And that is something which every market participant would like to have.